What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this beautiful river scene with this lovely mountain and scenery. Now as always there's links to everything in the description down below the palette and any brushes that I may have used that are external to Procreate I will have provided as well in the description so be sure to grab all of that before you get started. Now in this tutorial I go ahead and I use up to roughly around about 40-45 layers at one point so if you're concerned about your layer count and your iPad maybe can't handle it I do make measures throughout the tutorial to bear that in mind, but otherwise you can reduce it down to the size now on screen, which will be the same ratio, but will be a smaller canvas size. And that way you can maybe get some more layers out of your canvas. Otherwise just follow the instructions throughout the tutorial and I'll aid you through that process. Now, if you like tutorials like this, I post loads of them over on my Patreon. I love a landscape over on my Patreon. So be sure to go ahead and check out all the designs. There's a link in the description down below where you can see all the designs you would unlock before you join. Subscribe here on YouTube for weekly Procreate tutorials. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas and you've added in the stencil guide, you should see this on your screen. Now, if you don't know how to add a stencil guide, just simply go up to your actions and go to the add tab and then go to the option of insert photo. And you should have this photo saved to your photos and therefore you can just drop it in. Now, if we take a quick look at the design, we've got the sort of foreground over here where we've got some bushes, a tree on the left, followed by a, another set of land with some bushes on, some rolling hills, followed by a mountain in the background. We've also got some space there for some stones, but we may move them around as well. We don't have to follow that sequence. Now, just to give you an idea as well as to what this madness even means, uh, we have a set of black lines, which are going to be primarily the branches and then the blue lines there just sort of isolate a few areas where we can put some foliage of the tree and likewise down here some bushes. So when you're adding in your color, you can try and stick to those types of lines and therefore create separation, not just one giant bush. So that's what we're trying to work out. And then we'll have some trees there as well. So this is just always taken from my initial design of this. So without further ado, let's get started. So we'll keep this layer at the top and we'll create a new layer underneath it. And we'll go ahead and just block in all the basic colors to start with. So on this empty layer here, we just created underneath our stencil. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab the top color here on the second column from the right and drag it onto the screen. We'll then go ahead and create another new layer. We'll go to our colors. We'll go ahead and grab the middle color in the second column from the right again. We'll go to our selection tool this time and we'll go to the option of rectangle and make sure color fill is turned on. So it should be nice and blue there. And we're just gonna go ahead and draw almost just where the base there of that hill is. Just go ahead and just draw in a rectangle like so. So you fill out the whole of the bottom and let go and tap on your selection tool when you're done. And that's gonna be your water, of course. Once we add the hills and stuff, it will all disappear. Now I'm just gonna go up to my stencil for a moment and just lower its opacity down just so it's around about sort of 25%. You'll obviously still be able to see it roughly on screen. Now we're gonna start in the foreground, make our way backwards and just continue to add piece by piece and almost complete a section before moving on to the next one. Maybe we will revisit them anyway. So let's go ahead and create two new layers so that we can select both layers by swiping from left to right and we'll group them together and we'll rename this and we'll call it foreground. So in our foreground group, we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom layer out of the two of them. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the middle color in the first column. And we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go ahead and under organic, we're going to go ahead and select the twig brush here. Now the opacity is 100% and the size is currently set to 12, which is fine for the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to draw in the main trunk of the tree and we'll add some sort of size to it. Potentially we can actually increase it and that's what this marker is. So let's go up to 58% and we're just going to sort of run up the center here, creating the main trunk of the tree. You will end up with gaps on either side and that's fine. It will somewhat add to the effect. And we're just going to run that down in behind the bush like so. So we've got a nice straight upright, but also then just go back over it again and maybe add some nice bumps and lumps in there. It's not going to be super visible, so don't stress over it too much. Just a little something like this. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll drop our brush size down to the 12% marker and we're just going to add in some branches. Now this brush, as you can see, is quite streaky and I kind of like that. It creates some nice variation on some, some of the twigs. So if we start over here, we're just going to press with a little bit of pressure and just let just twiggy lines just run off of there. So a little something like that and then maybe thicken it out as it leaves the tree. So you've got a nice sort of exit and I've got a little gap there. So I'll just join that back in. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and move up towards this area over here. And we're gonna introduce another branch that runs off here. We will add some smaller ones in a second. We're just adding in the main branches for now. And we'll add in another one here as well. So I'm just thickening them up at the base of the tree. And then as they sort of run off and just disappear, we're gonna go ahead and add in some more of the thinner, less solid amount of pressure. Over here, rather than just make them all horizontal, we'll fire this one up here and then we'll just direct it over here. Add in two for a moment. You can thicken that up as well, just to add in a little bit more color to it. And then towards the top, I'm gonna add in a big sort of split at the top here. So like a bit of a split here, like so. What we can also do is just occasionally add in the odd one that runs off to the left. It can be any way you want. Just make sure that you have that sort of balance either side. Try not to make your gaps too even, potentially even just run another one at random just to add in that tiny little bit of detail where you have sort of branches that are in an uneven gap to one another. And then at the top, you should be able to see some lines where we let one run up into here and we let another one just run off over here too. Now, as I mentioned, we'll just reduce the brush size down to maybe around about sort of 4%, if not smaller than that. We can go down to maybe two. And then just off the ends of these, just, just run in a couple more of the sort of twigginess to them. So just adding in a couple more. They're not super critical because again, you may only see them if there's a gap in the trees. Uh, so we want to go ahead and just, just add in a couple, nothing too precious. Try not to stress over it. You know, something like this. Over here too, we'll just add in a couple of lines that just run off. And then further down, I just need to thicken this up because that weight doesn't look like it would be able to hold that. So just thicken that up, maybe just run one off of there and another one off of here. And then down here, I'll just thicken that up again. Run over my lines just a couple of times just to thicken them out. Maybe add in just a little sort of little nib there on the side maybe. And taking a look at that, that's all we need to add in. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and then create a, another new layer. We'll go down to the tree that we just created and drag it up and above our empty layer. So we should have an empty layer now underneath our tree. We're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna go ahead and go into textures and we're gonna use the grunge brush. And we're gonna set the brush to around about sort of the 24% mark. Now in the stencil, you'll be able to see these outlines here of the blue areas. Now this is what you're gonna use as a guide now to fill in a base backdrop color. So we're just adding in black or somewhat close to it in the background and then we'll add greens on top. So this is essentially our shadows. So we're gonna go ahead and just fill it all in and then just make sure you kind of stick to the uh, template there, the, the stencil, that's fine. And if you have any sort of little patches here with gaps in, that's fine. I wouldn't even recommend going back and sort of adjusting them. You can just leave them as is. I'm just going up and down and now I'm just following my guide. Feel free to just vary up slightly though if you want, if you want to just make yours look a slightly bit, you know, a bit different to the, the one provided. And then we're just gonna do the last one down here. And we'll also just block it in on the left-hand side, pretty much all the way down. And likewise, we'll just maybe just add in a little bit of extra sort of darkness just around here around the base of the tree. So for a minute, it looks a little bit odd, but again, this is just your base color. This is what we just build on top of shortly. I'm just gonna go back over, just trying to vary up some of the shapes a bit more. Maybe even give the odd little connection here and there, but obviously then bearing in mind the actual overall shape of it. So that's your backdrop. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is add in some green on top of these. Now for a minute, what you may need to do is bring in the stencil and maybe just bring the opacity up a bit again, up to about 80% just so that you can see those blue lines. And that's your guide again as to what to color in. So I'm just gonna reduce them down just a little bit, but you should be able to see those blue lines. Now above our tree, so we've got three layers in here still. We're grabbing the top layer in the foreground. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab this color here at the top of the second column. And we're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to organic and we're gonna use the snow gum brush. Now with this brush, you can go ahead and set the opacity around about 77%. And the size, let's go ahead and make that around about the 12% mark. Now it's pressure sensitive, so you do wanna be very careful with how much you add. If I press nice and light, you get a nice thin area there. And if you press really firm, you get a massive amount of petals. So just bear that in mind. So we'll undo that. 
And then taking a look at the shapes I provided, if anything, you're probably safer dropping it to about an 8% and pressing a little bit firmer. Using the sort of blue lines that I created, just adding in some leaves on top of the shadows that we just created. So there's a line here. And then over here on the left, we're going to introduce one that runs over the sort of the main trunk of the tree. So a little area like this and try and leave areas of randomness of little gaps here and there. Try not to make it just a solid block. And essentially all we're doing in, at this stage is coloring in the top area. So we're just going to go ahead and block that in with a couple more down here. And you can let a couple run close to the bottom, but you want the primary area to be the top of each area of the branches. We'll introduce another one over here too. So just following in that blue area, some nice big amount of coverage and then leave some gaps and you can add in a little bit underneath it, a little something like this. We'll then take a look at this area here. We've got another big sort of, they're almost like, not bushes, but like areas of just greenery. They almost look like bushes floating in a sense. But we'll just add in a few more on there. The odd little sort of speck of green underneath is fine. But you can see what I'm trying to aim for by looking at that. We've got a few gaps there, enough that you can separate each area as well. It's always key when you're doing trees like this just to try and create some separation so that things just don't look like one massive blob of you know, leaves, etc. You want to go ahead and just, just try and leave a few gaps. So I'm leaving random gaps where we've got the shadows and then just going back in and just adding a dash or two of colour. And then you can just leave that area with total darkness. We'll take a look at the top and I've got another one over here which leans all the way out to the right. And we can go ahead and just really overlap that as well. Add in some green there. Like so. And then we've got another one here on the left. Just another one. Let that run in. And it might even make that quite a bit bigger than the line, just to sort of fill up that top left corner a bit more. And then and then I'll just go back down here and just maybe introduce a little bit of extra colour here, just down the bottom. Now taking a look at that, we've now got the idea and concept as to where our sort of green areas are. If we go back down to the sort of uh, black backdrop area, we're going to tap on that layer and we'll go ahead and we'll alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of it, so we can't adjust the shape by accident. And we're going to go back to our brush and we're going to go back into the option of textures and grunge. And we'll just go ahead with, you can potentially drop your opacity down if you're heavy handed, but just bear in mind that I want you to be nice and light with your pressure at this point. And the top area of your bushes, just go ahead and just start to paint in a little bit of green on the top areas, like so. And then maybe even reduce the brush size down to about 15%, just to be a little bit more precise. And just add in a little sort of smudge of green underneath what we added in just a second ago. So we're kind of just adding in a little bit of filler green now. So a little bit of filler green, and you can let that go a little bit lower. It doesn't have to be just right next to your petals. So just, well, leaves, should I say, sorry. I don't mean to say petals. And you can also see we're going to reveal some of the tree structure as well. So by going around here, we're essentially painting underneath the tree trunk. And then we'll reveal some of the branches and some of the tree as well. So we're sort of painting in a little bit of color underneath all of those areas, which will just add a little bit more sort of surface green to them. A little bit more over here and a little bit more towards the bottom, like so. And I think that is roughly a good amount of coverage, so just a that little extra amount. And now with that, before we carry on with the rest of the leaves, we're just going to go ahead and just add some colour to the tree trunk. So if we go to the tree trunk and tap on it and we alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it, if you're struggling to see yours, just simply tap on the layer and go to the option of select but very critical that you turn off color fill like I've just done. And then that way you'll just see the lines on the screen, which will just tell you whereabouts the tree is. And then we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here at the bottom of the third column from the right. We're gonna go into our brush library and we're gonna to go to the option of painting. And we're gonna grab the watercolor brush. And the size is set to around about 10%. That looks pretty good to me. And we're just going to very lightly down the right hand side of the trunk, just add in a light coat of orange. So you may have to go up and down it a few times and don't worry about sort of creating a perfect amount of coverage either. Some of it can be slightly darker and some of it can be slightly brighter. That's totally fine. So I'm going back up it a couple of times there just to add in a little bit of brown so we can just see a little bit of lighting on there. 
and then we'll reduce the brush size down to maybe around about 7% and just on some of the top edges and some of your branches that you can see, just add in a little bit of brown or this orange technically-ish kind of tone towards the top. Adding in a little bit of extra color on top of some of these branches and then what that would do is, again where we can sort of peek through some of the tree and the greenery on it, we can just get a little bit of color off of some of the branches. I think that is everything. So we're just primarily focusing the light in there on the right hand side of the tree and by adding in this brush with a few streaks it looks great. But we're not quite done with that yet. We're then going to go ahead and go back to our brush and change it to the dry brush under painting. And with a brush size of around about 6%, I'm just going to run up and down it a few times just to add in the odd sort of speck and uh, grain in the wood that's a little bit sort of brighter so you can run some areas up and down again a few times. Less is more with this, so try not to go too mad with it. But just a few extra sort of grains in the wood will look really nice. And if we then go ahead and tap on our selection tool, you can now sort of see the main structure of the tree through all of our greenery. Now, if we go back up to our leaves at the top, we can go ahead and on the same layer, go to our colors. And we're gonna go ahead and move to this color here at the top of the fifth column. And we're gonna go back to our brush and go to the option of organic. Back to snow gum. Your settings should all be the same. So the size again, as a reminder, is 8% and 77% opacity. And then what we're gonna do is primarily focus in again on the top edges of all of our sort of green that we've added in. We're just gonna add in a little bit more green. So this is obviously a different tone. We can build up on top of the green that we've already added. So we'll just add in a few little specks of these green areas on top of some of the green leaves there. So just primarily focusing it above and trying to then make sure when I go over any area here of the tree trunk itself, just to add in the odd little sort of speck of it, that's fine, it'll look really cool. So let's just get back over there, adding it towards the top edges, the odd little sort of dash of it, so not too low, but just enough, a little bit lower will look great. Go over this area here too, and a little bit on this area that I added right at the end. And then we should already have a lot of structure coming through of that tree. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is go back down to the base layer we created, so the black layer, and we'll tap on it, and we will turn off the alpha lock. Because we're gonna to go to our eraser, and we're gonna tap on the eraser and go to the option of vintage, and the rad brush, and with your size of the rad brush set to around about sort of the 9% and the opacity 100, we're gonna go ahead and start to just erase a little bit from round the edges here of the sort of shadowy layer underneath. So we created an initial shape and now I just wanna break it up so it's not quite such a solid lump in certain areas and go around the top as well, just so that we can just allow through like a little bit of light here and there and allow the leaves to sort of now fill up the structure rather than the shadow. For example, here we've got this really sort of smudgy area underneath and for me, it's gotta go. And we just need to sort of just chop away into it, just hack away. And if you leave any sort of specks, you may have to just go back over them, but just hacking away. And again, if you go through the top area, you'll let through a little bit of light here and there. And I think that looks great. Just let's through the rest of the, uh, the scene, through the rest of our leaves. So just adding in here, you can go in and add the odd little sort of cut away randomly inside that area if you wish. Just try not to go too crazy. We still need to have a good structure to our tree. That's kind of the style that I'm going for with this. So once we've gone around those edges, you can see that everything's been broken up quite a bit. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is go back to the top leaves layer again. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the sixth color on that top row. Switching our brush, making sure it's still the snow gum, should I say. So again, on the top edges now, we're just gonna add in some nice specks of this beautiful green. Now, what I wanna try and focus is I wanna try and make sure that the light source is coming across here. So these areas of green here, where they're probably being blocked by these uh, areas of greenery, just sort of, just leave them. Now you can add in the odd sort of speck or two like that, but let's focus the majority of our brighter tones over to the right hand side, where we're letting that light come around and hit these edges and it's then blocking a little bit of the light coming around. By all means, pick a sort of area that you like the look of and maybe add in like a couple of little lighter specks on there where maybe the light is somehow just making its way around the tree or maybe there's a gap or this sticks right out. 
but then otherwise just a tap or two is fine. So just a tap or two with one or two leaves will just add in a nice amount of detail. And then what we've done is we've added in essentially what are our kind of final highlights on the top area of these trees. So all these branches. So taking a look at that, that looks lovely. I'm really happy with that. And we can come back to it later on if we need to make any adjustments. Let's go ahead and work on the bushes down here now. So we're gonna to go to our layers and in the foreground group, we'll just create another new layer. We'll go to our colors and grab the middle color in that first column again. We'll go back to our brush library and go into the option of textures and grunge. And with the brush size still set to the 24% marker we did before, we're just gonna create another area, which essentially is gonna follow exactly the same pattern as above. So I'm just gonna create a blob here, which is now gonna cut out the base of our tree. And then I'm just gonna fill this all in and just follow my guide. So we've got like a bush there and another bush here. And we just create a nice sort of round blobs on the edge there. And then just filling in the gap. So we've got a nice solid foundation to work with. Now we're gonna stay on this layer just for a second though. We are gonna to go to the layer and we'll tap on it and we will alpha lock it for a moment. And we'll go to our colors and we'll grab the top color in the second column. And where you can see those bush lines again in the blue, we're just gonna go ahead and with the grunge brush, just try and just add in some green to the top edges. And again, we'll probably reduce it down to about 13% now, just to try and just you know have a little bit more control over where the color is and how much. And you can see I'm leaving lots of gaps and again, trying to create lots of separation between each bush. And that's what we wanna aim for. It won't just look like one big area of greenery. So we've got a couple of little areas there and we'll add in another one over here just at the base of the tree. And then while we're on this layer again, we're just gonna to go to our colors and grab the top color in the fifth column and then just sprinkle in a little bit of this green here on the top edges, primarily of your sort of bushes that you've created. A little bit of extra green and this little more sort of punchy tone than the one that we just added in. But the two together will look great. Now my pressure is super light, so if you're struggling here, just try and lower the pressure that you're adding onto the screen. And I wanna make sure that we actually go back to then the top color in that second column and we get rid of that dark edge around the top. So we will need to go ahead and just green in that top edge, making sure that that is no longer black. It's at the minimum, it's the green. A little something like that around those top edges. And then let's go ahead and create another new layer. We'll go to our colors. Oh, in fact, we're on the right color. So the top of the second column and our brush wants to be under organic, the snow gum, and we'll get to work on adding the leaves on top. So again, just taking a look at your bushes and just keeping your pressure nice and light and just build on top of those green areas you just created. And we can always reduce the brush size as well in a moment. So we're currently at 8%. I'm gonna go ahead and just create these bushes first, and then I'm gonna lower it, just so I've got a little bit more control over where it all lands. So I'm gonna reduce that down now to around about 5%. I'm gonna go around the top of this one here. And the odd little stray leaf here and there is fine. And again, primarily focusing on the top edges of the bushes that you've created. Always trying to just think about a little gap in between the bushes that you've, you've got created there. So we, again, got that nice area separation. And then we'll go over this top one over here as well. Add in a couple of petals below. I keep saying petals, I mean leaves, I do apologize. A couple of extra leaves down here. Then we'll go to our colors. We'll grab the top color in that fifth column. And we'll go ahead and just add in the more sort of brighter tones again. Now we're gonna slowly sort of leave those leaves we added in a little bit lower and just primarily focus on the top area of the bushes because that's where the lighting is gonna be hitting more so. These are just dark shadowy areas in between each area of greenery. So just chuck in some color on here, around those edges, down towards the bottom there. And then on this area, we're also gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here at the top of the sixth column. And again, just add in your lighter tones, but again, focusing them a little bit more towards the top edges, a little bit more so, and you can vary up your weights. You can see there I pressed a little bit firmer in certain areas just to, I wanna create that nice random variation. Life, as I keep saying in a lot of my tutorials, it's nice and random and 
to try and replicate that is a little bit tricky, but when we've got these awesome brushes in Procreate, we can try to replicate it as much as possible. So we're just gonna add in some bushes there. And again, always zoom out, don't get lost in those details, as I always say, otherwise you'll forever try to create something really detailed. Now I'm gonna go back to my colors and I'm gonna grab this color here, the middle color in the fifth column. And then I'm just gonna add in a few extra color areas here in the shadows with this color tone of leaves. So these are just slightly more muted, but I think they'll just add a little something in here, but I'm not gonna to go to the very bottom of the design. I wanna leave that a little bit sort of more, um, just let it run out naturally towards the edge of the canvas. We don't wanna focus down here. And again, just like we did before above, we're gonna go back to our layers and go down to the base shape that we added underneath and tap on it and we'll turn off the alpha lock. Our eraser wants to be set to the rad brush again under vintage. And the size again, just for memory's sake, is 9%. And we're gonna go ahead and just erase that edge again, just breaking it up so it's not quite a solid shape and we just let the leaves dictate the shape of the bush down here. See, I'm just gonna really chop away into all of this. And I'm gonna leave it nice and chunky though at the bottom of that area there where we've got the base of the tree. But over here, I do wanna add in nice sort of gaps in here, just to show that there is a little bit of sort of uh, see-through where we'll see some of the water. The odd little sort of drag in woods is fine. Again, on the edges, it looks great because you just, you get rid of that solid shape to it, the solid nature. Lovely. So let's just keep making our way around here. I'm getting a little bit more daring as I keep making my way around just to chop into there and just let the, the bush shape be adjusted. So once we've got something like this, we can now move on to the next step, which will be a similar sort of process, but over here. So we're going to go to our layers and we're going to collapse the foreground layers down. We'll then create two new layers again, and we'll swipe from left to right on both of those and group them together and we'll rename this and we'll call it Midground. On the bottom layer out of the two, we'll go to our colors. We'll go to this color here, the middle color in the first column. Now our brush to start with wants to be calligraphy and the monoline brush. And the monoline is set to 7%. Because what I wanna to do to start with is just draw in the base and then we can add the nice sort of fluffy nature to the top edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw in around this corner here. So I'll just draw that again for you. Draw around here and then just add in a nice bumpy rocky edge to here. So feel free to follow the stencil, but add in some nice tremors in here just to really you know, edge it up a little bit. Now at this stage, just simply go ahead and draw in a line all the way across from your starting point to the edge of the screen and drag and drop the color in. That will just block out the foundations. Then we can go back to our brush and change it to the option of textures and the grunge brush. And again, we'll go ahead and add in the bush-like shapes at the top here. So following the guide that I've provided, make sure the bottom is nice and filled in. And we're just gonna add in some nice bushes that run all the way down into our solid shape. And then we'll just fill in the gap. Now, feel free to just adjust that so it's not quite so perfect and round like, like a cloud almost. And then again, we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here at the top of the second column. And we'll add in some sort of foundation colors. Now, again, take a look at the guide I've provided. You can see the blue lines in there and we're just gonna add in some green towards the top edges of our design. Now, what we can also do is if we go to the layer and we tap on it and we alpha lock it, it will mean that we can now go right up to the edges and make sure the edges are nice and green. So adding in these areas here. Now the bushes only come down to about this point here. So you don't wanna go all the way towards the bottom because that's gonna be where the ground is and the rock that we'll add in, the rocky kind of texture. So just bear that in mind. And a couple of extra areas here of green and then another one just in behind there as well. And I can bring this one down maybe just a tiny bit. Now, my pressure is really light because I want to go ahead and add in a few different tones in this area. So again, we're going to go ahead and we'll grab this color here at the top of the fifth column. We'll focus the green. And because the light is somewhat going to come from the right hand side, I want to sort of make the, the right edge of each bush a little bit more green. In here, we don't have to add in quite so much color, but you can just sort of make it up as you wish in terms of, you know, does the lighting wrap all the way over? Therefore, 
these bushes down here do get some green on them you know it's totally up to you that's the only thing to always consider when you create your own designs is where's the lighting coming from and would this area get any light and then if you make up a scenario well you know maybe this is quite a distance between these two so the light does come over and just spill onto the top and that's all you need to do to justify it but just you know trying to work out what may get in the way potentially lighting wise so we've got a nice sort of area of color up here we're then going to go to our colors and grab this one here at the bottom of the third column from the right now this is quite a light sort of orangey tone and i just want to add some areas of kind of like uh, wood almost in here kind of like the branches of each of these bushes so i'm just dashing in in some of the shadowy areas nothing too bright that's far too bright in there for me i'm pressing really firm they really light should i say just in these areas and just trying to just add in a little bit of sort of woody colors in there as well so just like before once we've done that we're going to go to our layers we're going to go to the empty layer above it we'll go to our colors and we'll start with this color here the top of the second column Go back to your brush library and go to the option of organic and then use the snow gun and then again just add in some leaves on the top so you may not see this color initially because we've got the nice green tones in there as well but these extra variations of color in the leaves will look great now for a minute i'm just going to turn off my stencil just so i can go ahead and add these in and see the edges of each of the bushes and i'm going to reduce the size again down to about three percent now because we're getting further and further back I want to be in more control and of course the details would slowly start to get a bit smaller so just bear that in mind in your own work again so every time we do this what we're doing is we're creating a foundation of the item and then just adding in the details on a separate layer i.e these leaves on top and if you zoom out again we've got some nice really crispy details in there and again we'll go to our colors and grab the top color in the fifth column and add in some brighter edges on the top got another brighter tone to add in here as well afterwards so again if you don't see too much of this color that's fine going around the top of the bush adding in some extra color so we've got just like this really sort of bushy island over here in the maybe even in the middle or maybe the land runs off to the right hand side in some way into a whole nother scene we don't really know but just something like that looks really cool and again we'll go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here the top of the sixth column there and again with the light coming across i just want to maybe add in the brighter tones towards the top right edges of each bush you know you can add in the odd speck everywhere just like we did with the trees so the same rules are going to somewhat apply all the way around here so i'm going to add in a good amount of sort of this brighter tone towards the top just to show the bright top edge We'll add in some on this one here too and again maybe a couple of leaves down here but maybe this area here gets a little bit more somehow the lighting is affecting it add in a couple more on the top edge a couple here too maybe the odd speck in there but if you zoom out you've now got a lot of sort of vegetation going on over there whether they are a little bit more convincing that they're like blades of grass almost or very small areas of greenery you know with the little bit of the orangey browny tone underneath that looks like dirt to me so it kind of makes it look as if it could be any wild sort of greenery which looks really cool now what we'll do is we'll go to our layers and we're going to go ahead and in front of our ground layer just for a moment we're going to go ahead and create a new layer tap on it and clipping mask it we're then going to go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab this color at the top of the third column and with our brush we're going to change it to painting and we're going to go ahead and grab the Goucher brush here now I'll probably ruin that but this one here and then what we're going to do is with our brush set to around about four percent we're going to go ahead and add in some sort of these are what I imagine is kind of like rocky area down here of the ground before it transitions up into sort of the dirt so I'm going to go around sort of the edges here just trying to sort of block in some areas of rock that's running down towards the the water here so for example over here i'll just block in a big area here so there's kind of side profile of the stone that you can see and then in the gaps here just add in some more and then maybe just the odd light stroke over the top so you can just blend it up in a second in towards some more soily kind of colors but just trying to give off the impression that there's maybe a little bit of just rock at the base there then we'll go to our colors and we'll grab this color here the bottom of the third column again the brush size 
about 3% still. And just on the top edge, with a kind of flat approach to it with your with your sort of uh, angle of your brush, just gonna sort of stroke in some areas here of this brush and just add in the concept that there's a little bit more ground here. And then just let that sort of very lightly just fade up towards the top edges. And you can make some of these edges down here a little bit brighter, but to me, there's just a really beautiful natural transition between the dirt and the soil potentially over there. And if you press a little bit too firm and you, or you wanna add some extra details, just go to your eraser, tap on it, go to painting and use the same brush, but maybe reduce the size of it down to a one or 2%. And then in some of these gaps, just really erase into there just to create some nice variation in the landscape. Like maybe there's some deep grooves on the top surface there. So like over there, there's just something in there, like a crack of some sort maybe. I will reduce the brush size down to another 1% and just, just add in some more grooves and cuts onto the surface to just vary up the color a little bit. So again, if you press too firm, you can now start to sort of chip away at it. And just I'm just randomly just scattering my brush up and down this edge now, and then just letting the odd line, pressing down now with my brush, you might be able to see with my pencil, it's quite firmly down. I'm just gonna go ahead and just add in some uh, extra little areas of detail in here. So just scribbling in some layers to the surface there. And I'm looking for the gaps in between my brush strokes that I added in with the soily color. That way then you can just emphasize the color even more. So just emphasize those edges and different variations in the shapes. So that should just be enough if you just run it up and down the edge as well, right up against the trim and then we've done our mid ground. Let's then go ahead and move on to the background set of hills. Now they're kind of background, but at the same time, the mountain will also be part of the background. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go down to the water's edge here. So this blank space down here of blue is gonna be our water. So we're gonna create two new layers in front of that, swipe on both of them together and group them together. And it will rename this and we'll call this background hills. Then what we'll do is on the bottom layer out of the two in there, we're gonna go ahead and make sure our color is set to the middle color in the first column. Our brush wants to go back to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my stencil yet again so we can see those shapes. Now we're gonna need our stencil later on because we're gonna to need to create the separation between all these hills. But I'm gonna go ahead and just draw in the, the shape of each thing. So I'm gonna just do one at a time. So I'll go along here, down towards the water's edge and just let that run all the way across to the right so I can drag and drop my color in. You could create separate layers for this if you want to and you have the layers. I'm just trying to make sure that I can accommodate for everyone. So if you wanna create separate layers for this and color them individually, use your layers to your advantage. But then what I'm gonna do is just go across here and then I'll go across the top line here and it runs into behind this tree here, so that's great. And then we're just gonna run along the line that I can see in the stencil where it just runs over towards this gap here and then drag and drop the color in. But there's actually three sets of hills here. So we're just gonna try and color them in accordingly. So we'll go to our layer, we'll tap on it and we'll alpha lock it. So if you've created separate layers, just tap on them and alpha lock them and color them individually. We're then gonna to go to our colors and we'll grab the top color in the second column and our brush library. And we wanna go back to the option of textures and grunge. And maybe with a slightly smaller brush size, about 10%, we're gonna start adding in some of the green grass over here. So I'm gonna follow my design and stencil all the way down towards the shoreline there. And I'm gonna reduce the brush size down to about 6% so I can make this line a little bit more solid. I do wanna make sure that there is a bit of distinction between the two, like so. And, and then we'll go ahead and just add in some more green here and just create random gaps in the green, that's fine. You see there's like little patchiness over here and this grunge brush is great for this because it has so much pressure sensitivity in it as well and random nature to the texture that it, you can pull off something like that quite easily. So I've left a few gaps there just to sort of create some variation in the ground. And then again, I'm gonna leave a gap. So we're just leaving a few pixels there where we then paint in the next hill. 
and let that just run down over to here. You can follow either one of those lines. There's two right next to each other, but that's fine. And again, just create some nice sort of variation in the landscape where there's grooves and you know the ground is never going to be perfect. So just letting that run all the way down towards the shore there. And again, leaving that little bit of a gap. And you could otherwise sometimes just link them together, which shows that they start off as two things and then they join together at the top. It's totally up to you what you want to do. I'll connect, I'll connect them ever so slightly, just as a little bit of connection. And then this one here, I'll leave completely separate on its own at the back, with just a little bit of green on that top surface. Again, we'll go to our colors. We'll grab this color here, the top of the fifth column, and we'll get in here and just towards the top edges, add in some more punchy green here. So it's gonna run quite low. We are going to go ahead and just adjust this layer here in a minute down at the bottom. So don't try and add in too much green right at the very bottom. I'm going to reduce the brush size down to still five, but I'm going to have to keep the pressure really low and just add a little bit of green onto here. But the one further back, we're just going to leave it a little bit more muted. We're not going to add that extra tone because as things get further back, you should add in less color. They should be less saturated as they make their way away from you. And likewise, they should also get a little bit lighter technically. So that's why we'll just leave that just like that. What we'll then go ahead and do is we'll go to the empty layer in this background hills. We'll go ahead and continue with the same color. So the top of the fifth column, but we'll change our brush and we're going to go back to the snow gum under organic, except what we're going to do is we're going to make this really, really small around about sort of 2%. And we're just going to cover the top area here and just add in detail. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just cover majority of the ground with just like specks of this green. So this is just minor, minor sort of texturing is what we're trying to do here, just to show that there's you know, still a bit of detail that we can just about make out, but nothing too crazy. Now I'm going to turn off my stencil again, just so I can see that top edge of this hill here. And I'm just going to run right up towards it. And essentially what I'm trying to do now is just add in patches of grass and just follow the same sort of pattern I did before where I've left gaps that are a little bit darker. That's fine. We'll just abide by those rules that we've added in. You know, we've already set the, the basis of what the land looks like. All we're doing now is just adding that top layer of texture. And we'll let that run right up to the top. And if you zoom out to your full canvas, all you've added there is just a very small amount of texture, but it just helps it just somewhat follow the same aesthetic as the rest of the design. So again, we'll just add in some texture on here too. Now I don't want it to run too high. I don't want it to run outside of that shape. We could even clip this afterwards just to guarantee that it doesn't fall out of the shape. So just a few in this area here and maybe right up towards that edge. But again, maybe we'll just add in a few specks back there, but just a few specks. We don't want to add in much back there. It's getting so far away. Then what we'll do is we'll go to our colors. And we'll move along a color to this one here, the top of the sixth column. And again, you want to just bear in mind that the closer we are, the sort of brighter the tone will be. And likewise, where the light source is coming from, which is just over the hill. So I'm happy to just add in some areas of land here that are going to catch some extra areas of lighting. Like here, just adding in where the grass is maybe a bit brighter. And we're just trying to add in some general variation in the surface. A little bit here and then right up towards that top edge. Just add in some more details like so. You may need to vary up the angle of your pencil as well, just to make sure that you don't have like continuous jagged lines. I can see a few on there that could arguably do with being touched up, but maybe I'll do that later on. And then over here, we'll just add a little bit on that top edge. So it comes down just a tiny bit. And again, maybe they get close to each other here where the two meet at the top of the valley-ish between the two of them. A little bit of extra detail there like so. And again, zoom out and get lost in it, but you can see all of those minor details in there, which look great. And then we're gonna go to our colors and we'll grab this color here. It's the top of the seventh column. And this is gonna be even brighter. So we just wanna add in some texture on this top edge. And this is gonna somewhat resemble the sun. So I'm just going back in now and just adding in some more detail here. 
and you can press a little bit firmer with your brush if you want to sort of speed up the process a little bit but I just want to add in a good amount of color onto this like flattish surface that I can see here just trying to show where the sun's maybe catching on the on the land and brighten it up at the top of the hill too and just let that come down a little bit lovely and again add some to this over here so again with a two touch that's fine I'll add in a little bit of detail there and just a little bit of that lovely you know warmer sun look to it like so and we will go to the layer we'll tap on it and we will clip it to the original shape that way it all stays a little bit more contained and that also then means we can go right up to the edge now and just make sure that the edge is the brightest tone so the very top edge of the land shouldn't have this sort of darker trim to it it should have the somewhat the brighter tone not always not in all instances but right now in this instance we just want to add that on the top so with that done what we're then going to go ahead and do is create some trees which will then add some nice casted shadows so we're going to go to our layers and we'll create another new layer in the background hills we'll go to our colors and we'll grab the middle color in that first column We'll go to our brush library and we're going to go ahead and use the vintage and rad brush i love this brush for trees and the size is set to about two percent and we're going to go ahead and just draw in a straight line down here pop your finger on the screen like so so you get a nice straight line and then all i want you to do is start at the top and as you get progressively wider towards the bottom just zigzag outwards and make sure you get progressively wider as you get towards the bottom like so and then just run up and down the center a couple more times just to really bulk out the center of the tree and you can go back up it a couple of times just not quite as wide each time just to bulk out the center of it a bit more you know, something like that and then you can get in there and maybe add in some nice fun sort of intricate details if you wish and just break up those sort of lines a little bit more but ultimately you should end up with a little something like this and then all we need to do is go to the layer tap on it and alpha lock it and then we'll go to our colors and we'll grab the uh, middle color here in the fifth column and we're going to brush over it on the right hand side and left hand side with just a little bit of this green just to leave the base color in and focus a bit more on the right hand side now and then that is going to be kind of like our foundation green as well as our shadow color we'll then go to our colors and grab the top color in that column so the fifth column top color and just go over the right hand side again with this green right up towards the top then go to your colors move across a color top of the sixth column and brush in some more green on that top and right hand side this is where the lighting's coming from you can add in the odd dash that runs across to the left hand side that's fine again zoom out look how tiny that tree is do not get lost in those details and then what we're then going to go ahead and do is just go back to this top color in the second column and now just sort of break up the greens a little bit more because they were all of our brighter tones we now just want to sort of add in a little bit of a shadow on top of them just to just to break them up a little bit more and also fill in the tree so i've run primarily down the middle of the tree there just to add in a little bit of structure to it now i'm going to go to the layer i'm going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it you'll immediately notice it sort of darkens up and i'll swipe it to the left and duplicate it again and pinch all three together so what you've done there is just sort of blocked it out a bit more and then you can go back in with the original color the middle color in the first column with a small brush size and just get underneath some of your branches there and just add in some shadowy tones just to break up that right side so it's not sort of super green and just add in that final step here on these trees so they're quite simple and quite sort of uh quite untidy is probably the right word so now we've done one what we can then do is go ahead and create a casted shadow off of it and then it's up to us if we want to create multiple trees or just duplicate the tree so we're going to go to the layer first of all and we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out of the two should be alpha locked if it's not just tap on it and alpha lock it and with your color set to the middle color in that first column go back to your layer tap on it and fill it and then tap on it and turn off the alpha lock then grab your cursor flip it vertically move it down so it links up at the bottom and then grab distort and move it across to the right hand side so we want to create this really beautiful long casted shadow down the hill from our tree so i'm going to go ahead and create a little bit of something like this 
and then tap on my cursor when I'm done, so you'll end up with this beautiful shadow. And then I'm going to go to my adjustments and Gaussian Blur and swipe it from left to right. So we want to keep a lot of its structure, so we don't want to make this sort of very large at all. We're going to go up to 3% and then tap on our adjustments when we're done. And if you zoom out again, now you've got this beautiful isolated tree with a shadow running off of it. Now, I'm going to give you an ultimatum. It's totally up to you based on your layers and the time that you want to spend on this. You can go ahead now and pinch the tree to the shadow. So you could go ahead and tap on it, merge it down otherwise, and then swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and just continue to uniform it, scale it down in size, and you're going to have to do this lots and lots of times to fill up the top area here with a forest. So for example, I would just duplicate it a few times like this, stack a few close together, and we're just going to continue that all the way down that top edge. The other thing you could then do is go ahead and create multiple trees and maybe like one, maybe two, maybe three, and then just go ahead and fill out the rest of it with different ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a lot of these ones first. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue to swipe them to the left and duplicate them. If you're running out of layers, just simply merge a few of them together. That's fine. As long as you've got one that you can go back to and reduplicate, that's fine. But for now, all you need to do is just keep swiping them to the left and grabbing your cursor, bunch a few of them together, create like a nice little cluster here and there of some of the trees and scale some up and down so they're varied in size and whatnot. So like a little something like that. And then once you've got some coverage like that, I'm then going to go ahead and create another tree and potentially even a second one again, just to fill in some gaps. So I'm going to go ahead and for now, I'll go ahead and merge all of them bar the bottom one by pinching them together. So I've got my original one over here on the right still. So if I go to my layers, you can see it's still there, but all the extra variations are on one layer. I'm going to go ahead and turn them off for a minute and I'll keep the original tree and I'll create a new layer. I'll go to my brush, make sure it's still the rad brush and create another tree that's going to look slightly different. So I'm going to somewhat keep it the same height to start with because I can decide what the height is later on with the uniform option. I'll draw in my line down the middle as my guide. I'll make my brush size 2% and I'm just going to go down here with my brush and just create a tree. Now you want to try and make sure the sort of characteristics of the one that you've just made before are not 100% mimicked. Otherwise this sort of extra process is a little bit pointless. So you want to go ahead and maybe just make this one like a little bit longer at the top potentially and maybe have more of a uh, you know top heavy look to it with more branches sticking out at the top here for example or just a lot wider it's just a simple way to do it just make it a lot lot wider than the other one and now i'm just going in and just purposely making sure that some trees look a little bit different or some branches should i say so there's some uniqueness to this one and then I'll go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it, and swipe it to the left and duplicate it, and just merge all three of those together. So I'll merge them down, tap and merge them down. So three are in one layer now. Tap on it and go ahead and alpha lock it. Go to your colors. Grab, let's grab the top of the second column. And we're just going to go ahead and chuck in some green on the right hand side here and on the left, just a little bit on the left but primarily focusing it up and down that right hand side. You see how just scribbly I'm being, just let the rad brush do all the work for you. Then go to your colors and grab the top of the fifth column. And we're just gonna dash in some green on these edges here, up and down like so. And maybe the odd one on the left, but I'm gonna maybe keep this one a little bit darker on that left hand side rather than this one. Again, so there's some variation. I'll go to my colors. I'm gonna grab the top color in the sixth column and then just dash in a little bit of these green, brighter areas on top of some of these branches. Just a few of them. Odd little sort of speck that faces us as well, like a branch that's facing out towards us. It's fine, so just like a couple of dashes up and down there will look lovely. And again, zoom out, it's a tiny, tiny tree. And then once you're happy, go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, make sure it's alpha locked, so tap on it and alpha lock it. Go to your colors, grab the middle color in the first column, and go back to the layer, tap on it and fill it. Tap on it and turn off the alpha lock. Grab your cursor, flip it vertically and move it down so it joins up at the bottom. 
grab your distort tool and because we kept the original tree there, I can gauge the angle of it. So I can go ahead and just make sure that those angles match. Tap on my cursor when I'm done. Go to my adjustments and Gaussian blur and again blur at 3% just like we did the other one. So 3% and we'll tap on our adjustments when we're done. And then I'll go to the layers and that tree in its shadow, just tap on the tree and merge it down so it's all on one layer. And again, we can grab our cursor, we can now manipulate this into position. We can even move the first one across. So go back to your layer and maybe move this one across. And we're just gonna go ahead and put some trees on this hillside. And I think, to be honest with you, the two should be enough now. So don't stress over it too much, but otherwise feel free to create as many different trees as you like. I'm gonna bring in all the other trees I made. And I'm just gonna simply keep going by duplicating that in first tree and with the uniform option, just scaling it down in size and then just putting it on the hillside as well. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, chuck it in here. Now I'll get back to my layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it, grab my cursor and just scale it down. Create some variation in the trees. You can put some right next to each other again, something like that. So this process is just trying to make sure that when somebody looks at this design, they don't just immediately see a lot of repetition. It's quite easy to spot. So I'm just going to continue now just to reduce this down in size and maybe just chuck one in the gap right on top of the hillside, which I think looks rather lovely. What else can we do? Let's go ahead and just swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Move maybe one over to the left hand side there on its own. And we can go ahead and I'll grab the first one. I think I need to just create some separation between these a little bit. So maybe I'll move this fella here right off to the right hand side here, maybe even scale it up in size and move it off to the right hand side here, just in front of this tree, but off to the edge of my canvas. And it doesn't have to be a full forest, it's totally up to you. The only other thing you could do is once you're happy with your sort of formation of them, you could also go ahead and swipe some to the left and duplicate them and then move them underneath the hillside. So for example, here, I've got a lot on one layer. I can swipe them to the left and duplicate them and then drag them underneath my ground layer here for that area and grab my cursor and just move them in behind. That way they don't cast a shadow because you can see they've got the shadows attached to them. So if I was to move them say over to here, you can see them and I can scale them down in size, but they don't have that shadow that's gonna affect the ground around it, which I actually really like. So I'm gonna tap on my cursor and I'll probably go ahead and leave it as it is. So we've added in a good amount of sort of detail over there as well. Now the next step is to go ahead and add in our mountain. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna go ahead and go down to the blue layer that's essentially our sky and create a new layer in front of it. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our colors and making sure we use this color here at the bottom of the second column. We're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna grab the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is draw in a mountain there in the background and again you can go ahead and collapse the background hills down for example and bring back in the stencil and you can see we've got a bit of a guide there so i'm just going to start over here behind the tree and we're going to introduce that top layer so i'm going to go ahead and we're following this line here by the way that's a little bit sort of uh, orangey or brown so we're going to go up towards the peak of our mountain there and we're going to go ahead and just run that all the way down this edge here towards the right and then you're going to need to go ahead and find your initial starting point or otherwise just go down it, go all the way around through the ground and go off to the right so that you can drag and drop the color into that space. It's not really critical. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in the snow, for example, and I put it on a separate layer just in case we add in too much. So if we go to our colors and we grab this color here, the bottom of the far right column, we're going to go ahead and go to our brush library. We're going to go into the option of sketching. And in sketching, we're going to go ahead and use the artistic crayon. And this will be our snow. So if we draw in, we can see there we've got a circle head on it. So that's what we're going to have to bear in mind. And with a little bit of pressure to start with, we're just going to block in the right side. So we're going to create a bit of a jagged line down the center here, which is going to act as our brighter side compared to our lighter side. By the way, my size there is 2%. And I'll create another sort of groove over here, like quite a jagged sort of shape here. So you're creating kind of like a zigzag running off the center there and let that just run off all the way down towards the bottom. 
and then we'll block in the top area there so we've got a good solid foundation at the top and then from there we can go ahead and just create more ridges but running off a little bit over to the right hand side so i'm going to create like a bump there and just let that run underneath and just add in a light amount of pressure here just to fill in some gaps we don't want it all solid white that won't look quite so nice so we're going to create some nice grooves here and there so like here i can just leave this gap here and maybe block in that right hand side it's all adjustable we can all come back and change it afterwards but a little something like that to start with then go to your colors and we're going to go ahead and grab this blue tone so it's the middle color in the far right column and then we'll add in the left side in a similar fashion we're going to sort of run up towards those areas there which you created those ridge lines and that is going to act as the shadow sort of separator so this side now over here is our shadowed side so i'm going to block in some blue up there we'll get really close to our ridge line here for example and then maybe we can leave like a little bit of a gap there and again you're kind of just sort of now going to sort of just create sort of lines that just run off so just create a line to start with it's just as simple as that and then just with that just bulk out the top of it maybe and then create some more sort of streaks underneath and if you create like a nice little crate sort of crater there that's fine we'll leave that gap love that little bit of detail and just let that just run down so i'm just creating jagged lines and then maybe just connecting them up and just trying to leave these little grooves here in the side of the mountain so just adding in some snow on that top edge zoom now we'll just add in a light coat in there it's a little something like that and again this is just the entry level just to start with but we'll we'll follow that groove down to the right hand side just a little bit and then just create some more sort of just, just lines that just run off from that center point so just create some nice streaks that run off nicely separating the two sides so again i'm just going to go over here and just create some streaks that just run off down to the left hand side so just creating some streaks that just run off covering the whole of the left side but obviously still leaving gaps at the same time for sort of the areas that snow hasn't landed on and then you can go ahead and go to your eraser tap on your eraser and change it to sketching and the artistic crayon and we'll increase the opacity up to 100 percent and reduce the size down to something really small maybe a very small two percent if not a one percent and then you can run up and down the ridge line, for example, and create some separation between some of the areas here, primarily erasing from the left hand side, if that's what you want to do, so that the snow nicely sits on that right side. And then with this, we can then go ahead and just like erase into certain areas. So just create a big patch of erasing into here, very light with my pressure at that point, just to take away a little bit of that blue. And then I'll go down to a smaller 1% and then maybe try and introduce some areas very specific. So I'm pressing very firm down with my brush now just to try and, you know, just try and add in some cool grooves in here, some bumps and lumps in the surface. Mountains can be tricky and I do know that. But hopefully if you just follow these particular steps of the grooves and the cutouts, you should be able to create some nice texture. And don't worry about down here because in a second I'm actually just going to fade out the bottom edge anyway. But we'll go ahead and we'll just erase from the back area over here just taking away a little bit of that snow on the back area make sure it's nice and streaky and i'm going to run into this area down here creating some really cool grooves in there so just let that maybe all run all the way up to there and create some more verticality by creating some more sort of steep lines in there where there's grooves and just areas where the snow can't quite sit so I'm just going to create some more off of that edge here. And we don't have to focus this primarily on the left hand side. We can do it on both sides so we can cut away into the right as well. Now, I don't recommend we go too mad on this side. I do purposely quite like the brighter, whiter side like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and just scratch in some details there and just try and just erase and create random grooves. I'm literally not really trying to do something too purposeful here. I'm just just cutting away at certain areas and the ridge lines that we created to try and just create some more shapes now as i mentioned don't stress too much because what we're now going to go ahead and do is go ahead and grab our eraser and change it to airbrushing and the soft brush and then we'll go to our layer and we'll go down to the base shape of the mountain and then with a soft airbrush around about we can make it quite large maybe around about what size is this 14 percent let's just go left to right and just fade out that bottom edge and we're literally erasing it so just bear that in mind and we're just going to erase that out until it's very sort of 
light towards the bottom and maybe just bring it up on the edges a tiny bit if it needs to be. So we've added in a mountain there in the background and you can make some adjustments of course to the shape. For example, me, I wanna to go to my calligraphy option of the monoline and with my eraser, go back to the layer and turn off my stencil at the top. And I'm just gonna adjust the shape of this. I just wanna sort of make it a little bit more jagged and bumpy because I've got quite a sort of round shape on this back edge here. So I wanna just create a little bit more of a jagged look to this side. So I've really cut away and I like to keep things like this in the video as I always say because it's nice for you guys to know what to do but also maybe what to look for at the same time. So not only following steps, you can make corrections and know how to correct with your own. So if yours was perfect first time, congratulations, whereas mine just needs a little bit of extra love and just some just extra sort of detail in there. And you can see I've created a much sharper, steeper look to it, which I really prefer. And then if you're happy with your mountain, what you can then go ahead and do is, is go to the layer. We can go ahead and maybe even group these together by swiping from left to right on both of them and grouping them. And if you tap on the group to collapse it and swipe it to the left and duplicate it, the bottom group, just simply tap on it and flatten it into one layer. Then grab your cursor and just be a bit naughty here and just scale this down in size and move it in behind the one that you uh, created just a little bit further back so we can create a second mountain. And obviously there's a little bit of work we've got to do there. But if we just move one just a little bit further back, maybe even just here, we can tap on our cursor, grab our eraser and make sure it's back to airbrushing and the soft brush. We can get rid of that box line I can see at the very bottom there that I had to get rid of. And once you've done that, just go to the layer, tap on it and lower its opacity down. Drop it down to around about sort of 55%. So there's a separate mountain back there, but it's a little bit further back. So that way you can create a bigger scene by just reusing some items, just like the same as we did with the trees. Now we're gonna get into the water down here now and start making some reflections. So let's go to our layers and we've got our mountain group that we created here, the main mountain. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Tap on the bottom one, tap on it and flatten it. And then we're gonna to need to move it above this solid block of blue, which is actually our water down here. Now, if you grab your cursor, you flip it vertically down here and drag it down. Now we don't need to drag it down to the point where you know we can see the entire thing. And also the reflection here is not gonna count because this land is in the way. The reflection is only gonna be visible in this area here. So all we need to do really is make sure the right edge there matches up and it's a little bit lower, somewhat like here. I can see I've got a black line there where when I did my erasing, you can see there's a line running through. So again, I'll just use my eraser and the soft airbrush and get rid of it and in that corner too. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my adjustments, motion blur, and we're gonna drag down on our canvas, straight down, and we'll add in a lovely sort of 28% motion blur there, if not more. Could we get away with a little bit more? Probably up to about sort of 32. So I'm gonna drag down again. I wanna make sure it's nice and straight down. So 32% and let go. And then go to your layer and just make sure you tap on it and clip it to the water. So that way there's no spillage at the top. Now what I will then wanna do is with our ground, we're gonna create another new layer. We'll tap on it and we'll clipping mask it and we'll go to our colors. And we'll go ahead and grab this color here, the middle of the first column. With our brush, we wanna have it set to airbrushing and the soft brush. And the size wants to be about 7%. We're just gonna go ahead and just go along this sort of ridge line here, or the ground layer here, shall I say, and just Add in a little bit of darkness there underneath the ground, which again, we're also gonna motion blur as well, but I'm just pushing it backwards as well. So just adding in a good chunk of color. Then go to our adjustments, motion blur and drag down again. And then this time we wanna go ahead and make this a bit smaller. So probably around about sort of the 26% mark. It's just gonna add in a little bit of extra sort of shadowing underneath the ground there and tap on your selection tool when you're done. Next, let's go ahead and reflect this in the water. Now, if you're struggling for layers, there's a little trick you can do is if you hold down on the arrow on the right hand side here, hold down on it, it will turn off everything but that group. And if you turn off your background color and then take a look at your canvas, swipe with three fingers down and go to the option of copy all. Then go ahead and go back to your layers, hold down on the tick again and it will reveal everything again. Then go down to your water layer here that we created and then go ahead and create a new layer. And then with your other hand, swipe down with three fingers and go to the option of paste. 
and it pasted that layer in. So it copied everything that it could see, which is why we had to turn off everything. And if you go to your layer, you'll now have this extra layer with everything flattened down in there on one layer. And again, grab your cursor, flip it vertically, move it down. And again, you don't need to make sure that the whole thing is reflected because you wouldn't see the whole thing. As long as the tip there on the left hand side matches up correctly and tap on your selection tool when you're done. And again, go to your adjustments, motion blur and drag perfectly down on the screen. And you should end up with a nice vertical uh, little bit of a reflection. Now we're gonna go ahead and just drag that down and I'm probably gonna try and make it a little bit bigger than the top ones we made. So around about the 42% mark and grab my cursor then straight away and just move it down so that the reflection doesn't spill over at the top. We want it all primarily down here and up to that right edge as well. And then tap on your selection tool when you're done. You should have this beautiful little reflection. Next, let's go ahead and add in some ripples to the water. So we're gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna go ahead and we've got three layers clipped to the water layer. We're gonna create a new layer in front of it. It does not wanna be clipped. Then go to your brush library and I'll have provided a link in the description down below to the Leatherwood edited by myself. So you need to grab that one and for you it'll be under imported, but for me it's under artistic and we've got the Leatherwood edited by myself. Now we're gonna go ahead and with our colors set to this color here in the very bottom right of our palette, we're gonna make sure the opacity set to 75% and the size wants to be fairly small around about two or 1%. You can maybe get away with this three, but it looks a little bit too big, but we'll try the three to start with. And then what we're gonna do is just around the edge here of our land, we're just gonna go ahead and just bring in some ripples that run around this edge here. So just running around the edge, we're just gonna push out some color to the left. And I will actually reduce my brush size down to a smaller size. So around about sort of the one to 2% size. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add in some lovely ripples. So they wanna kind of primarily move horizontally to the ground. And we're just moving the odd sort of flick outwards to the left is fine. I'm gonna redefine these ones a bit more, the ones that I just previously added in. And then as you make your way further down here, you can just simply add like a little bit of white that just makes it sort of add in a little bit of separation between the ground and the water and then we're imagining the flow is running towards us here. So where it hits some of these uh, sort of corners, it's just adding in a little bit of a ripple. So it's gonna add in a little bit more here and make sure again, they try to primarily move horizontally. A little something along those edges looks great. You create that beautiful amount of separation. And then before we carry on, we're then gonna go ahead and go to our colors, grab the middle color in the first column and then we're gonna go ahead and make our brush size the 3% mark. And we're gonna go ahead and add in some darker tone very close to it, if not slightly below it. So we're just gonna run this up and down the sort of edge there, just adding in a little bit of extra darkness up against there, which is somewhat acting as a shadow, but also maybe a little bit of a transparent look through the sort of water towards something else underneath the surface. I'm adding in the odd little sort of speck here and there that runs a little bit astray. And I'm being very light with my pressure and just letting the leather word occasionally just dash onto the screen if it feels like it's necessary. I'm then gonna go back to my color and grab the bottom color in the far right column. And again, with a smaller brush size, maybe around about that two or 1% mark, just gonna go back in here and just over the top of some of those shadows that we just added in, just introduce a little bit of a whiter tone. So it's kind of like adding in a top level sort of highlight on top of your shadows. So just going back in here and just adding in a little something of white potentially on top of some of your shadowy areas. But again, all this is primarily trying to do is outline the surface so that you can see where the water runs up to. Then we're also gonna go ahead and do is just a little bit further back, just introduce the odd sort of horizontal line. It can be nice and small, really dainty in size. Don't go too mad with it. Less is definitely gonna be more here. We wanna create like a very still environment. Just a little bit of sort of a idea that there is some water there. And again, back here, we're just gonna go ahead and just add in a white run around the edge there. Just a little something like that. And then the odd little dash away from it will look lovely. Maybe a little bit further back too. Just a tiny bit of some quite light pressure. And I'll run this up and down here as well. 
it's like so it's like there's something else maybe under the water that's just disturbing it slightly that's fine so we've got this beautiful little amount of water reflection here and then we can add in the odd little one down here too just like a couple now i'm purposely leaving this space here because we're going to add in some stones shortly into the ground or into the water so just adding in some in these areas here so let's do exactly that let's go ahead now and create a new layer underneath the one we were just working on so i've tapped on the layer underneath and create a new layer i'm going to go to my brush library and again go to calligraphy and the monoline brush and go to my colors and grab the middle color in that far left column and again we're just going to create a shape so let's go ahead and just create a rock so start off with a little bit of sort of a straight upright edge and that's where it sort of makes its way out of the water and then you can just go ahead and just create a little sort of shape like this and then drag and drop your coloring now on this occasion we're going to go ahead and go to the layer tap on it and alpha lock it we're then going to go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab that orange tone at the bottom of the third column from the right and go to our brush library we'll go to painting and we'll grab this couche brush again sorry again if i butchered it and in sort of two motions i want you to go ahead and sort of cover up the top surface of it a little bit like this and then maybe a little bit off to the right so a little something like that and when you zoom out the rock now you can clearly see has somewhat like two different sides to it and that's all you need to do you could maybe go in here and just add in a tiny little sort of extra bit of color down here maybe but it's really unnecessary because you just need to add in that two sort of layers of color and you're done and then all you need to do is go to the layer swipe it to the left and duplicate it and the one underneath tap on it and turn off the alpha lock grab your cursor and flip it vertically drag it down so they are somewhat touching on those edges you don't want to make sure that anything other than the edges on the corners are touching and then go back to your adjustments motion blur and drag down to add in a beautiful little reflection now i'm going to make this a little bit smaller maybe around about 15 percent so that i can grab my cursor and just move it down so none of that reflection moves upwards out of the scene and if you want to, you can go ahead and lower the opacity down of it as well. If you want to just to drop it down a tiny bit, maybe down to about 85%. Now, at this stage, it's totally up to you. Again, if you want to create multiple rocks and variations, or you can go ahead and tap on the rock here and merge it down. So it's got its reflection underneath and duplicate that multiple times in the water. Otherwise, we're going to go to our layers, create another new layer, go to our colors and grab the middle color in that first column. We're going to go to our brush library and grab calligraphy and the monoline brush and now for this i'm going to leave that rock there i'm then going to go ahead and create a bit of a sort of trail around it as if they're like stepping stones from left to right so i'm going to create a rock over here maybe another one here so they can go across and then maybe the odd one down here so i'm going to go ahead and just draw in another rock now what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a few of them on one layer and then we'll just have to manually adjust them if we want to so I'm making this one a little bit bigger so it blocks in this area over here and I'll drag in the color and then I'll create maybe another one just over here making this one maybe very sort of shallow in height so a little something like this drag in the color taking a look at that that looks pretty good to me I quite like the three they actually look quite nice and neat together but otherwise we can go ahead and maybe create like a little rock over here just poking its head out of the water and again just grab the bottom of it and fill that in filling in the gap so just a little something there as well maybe we'll go ahead and create another one now don't connect them together because in a minute when we need to do our reflections we do need to make sure that they are separated from one another so we'll drag in the color on this occasion again we've got another rock there and maybe just a third just here right beside it so there's a little cluster so you can spend as much time as you want on this adding in as much detail as you like what we're then going to go ahead and do is go to the layer tap on it and we're going to alpha lock it we'll go to our colors and grab the bottom color in the third column from the right and go back to painting and use that gouache brush again and we're just going to go ahead and somewhat again in two motions if possible i'm going to make brush eyes a bit bigger four percent now and just go ahead and just cover over the top area there maybe another sort of area there and that's all you need to do one brighter side one shadowed side again maybe in this one here i'll just Add in a little bit of color on that left and just add in like a little something like that. That's it. Let this brush do the work. A little bit on there, a little bit across the top, a little bit across the top edge here, and then a little bit on that right side. 
And then on this one, it's quite a big shape, so maybe I'll need to go ahead and add a bit more pressure. Maybe a, like a little shape like that. And then go down this side, and we've added in another rock. Maybe I'll add in a bit more colour on him, just because it's a little bit closer. In fact, let's go over it a little bit lighter. Now, if you did the same as me and you created multiple rocks on the same layer, all we need to do is for each one is make a selection and move it underneath. So we're going to go to our selection tool. We're going to make sure color fill is turned off and we're going to go to our freehand option. Draw in a circle around one rock, tap on the dot at the top to complete that and go to the option of copy and paste. You won't see any visual change, but on your layers, you'll have this new layer here from selection. Drag that underneath all the rocks that are on that one layer. So drag it underneath, then grab your cursor, flip it vertically, move it down again so the edges touch, and go to your adjustments, motion blur, and again, drag down in a vertical fashion to about 22%. Then go ahead and grab your cursor and just move it down just to make sure that there's no spill over at the top. We should end up with a little something like that and then repeat that. So go back to the layer of rocks. Go ahead and go to your selection tool. Draw around the rock that you wanna grab the reflection for. Tap on the dot, copy paste, go to your layers, drag that layer underneath your rocks, grab your cursor, flip it vertically, and move it underneath. Tap on your cursor, go to your adjustments, motion blur, and Blur that out. So about sort of, uh, we went up to sort of the 20% mark last time, but this one's a bit smaller and I'm gonna keep it around about 12%. That's fine. So a nice shallow reflection there. Then these rocks here, if you created some like me that are nicely clustered together, this is gonna just be why we draw around them. Now in your layers, again, if you're concerned, the two reflections that you just made, just simply tap on them and merge them together. So go back to the layer with all the rocks on. Go to your selection tool and make a selection around the rock that you want to grab. Go to copy paste, grab your cursor, flip it vertically, move it down in your layers. And then for a minute, it's just above the layer, but it's fine. We'll go to our adjustments and go to the option of motion blur and blur it. And I'm going to go to the 12% mark again, grab my cursor and just move it up a little bit so it's underneath. I also need to go to my layer and move it down to where the other reflections are and just tap on it and merge it down onto one layer. So we've got these beautiful reflections coming through. We've got two more to go. So go to the layer for the rocks, grab your selection tool, draw around it, tap on your dot, copy paste, grab your cursor, flip it vertically and move it down underneath. And then if we go ahead and go to the layer, drag it down to where the reflections are, go to our adjustments and go to the option of motion blur and motion blur that out as well. I'm gonna go up to 13%, tap on my adjustments when I'm done. I'll then go ahead and go to that layer, tap on it and merge it down to the other reflections. And then we've got one more to do, so we go back to the rock layer, grab your selection tool, draw around your rock, tap on the dot, copy paste, Go to your layer, drag it down to where the reflections are, so just underneath our rocks basically. Grab your cursor, flip it vertically and move it down like so. And I may wanna go ahead and maybe rotate this slightly and just make sure those edges touch. Tap on my cursor when I'm done and go to my adjustments, motion blur and blur that out. I'm gonna go up to about sort of 16% this time, simply being because it's quite a large shape, I'm just gonna add in a little bit extra and tap on my adjustments when I'm done, making sure I go back to the layer, tap on it and merge it to all the other reflections as well. So tap on it, not clipping mask it, tap on it and merge it down. Now at this stage, what we want to then do is go back to the layer that's got all of these beautiful little sort of white highlights on them. So we grab that layer, stay on the layer, go to your colors, grab the color in the bottom right of the palette and go to your brush, Go back into imported for yourself. For me, it's under artistic and grab that leather wood edited by myself. And again, go around the edge of the rocks these times. So go around these edge. Now bear in mind, if you draw on top of the rock, it's gonna draw on top of the rock. So don't do anything like that. You wanna to keep to the very edge of the rock itself. Add in 
some lovely sort of ripple lines around the rock. And it's like these small details such as this that just really help something look convincing that they are really part of the environment rather than just sort of sat there. But these beautiful little extra details, they look great. Little something around that edge. Around here too. Around the edge. Now I'm primarily focusing a little bit more of the chaotic sort of white lines towards the sides, just because where the current's coming through. You can always add some extra little ones in behind if you feel like it really would disturb the water quite a bit. So you can just create some little sort of trickles off of those, especially maybe in this area for me, for example, where I've got three very close together, maybe it would disturb the sort of water quite a bit. So adding in some details on the water surface there. And again, you can go to your colors and grab the middle color in the first column, zoom in and just add in some shadows as well around them. So you can overlap some of your white lines there. You can also just go into certain areas in behind and just add in some shadowy sort of tones and just darkness around the base of the rock. A little something like this. I'm just trying to be a little bit quick with these ones here, just going around the base. They don't need too much love or too much care and attention. A little something like that. Those beautiful, beautiful reflections. Now there's actually only a few adjustments we need to make. Back here on this hillside there in our background hills, if we open that up and we go to the actual base layer for the shape, we can go straight to it and we can go to our colors. We can grab the bottom color in the third column from the right. And we can go to our brush and go to painting and that Huchet brush. And with the size set to about sort of three or 4%, we're just gonna go ahead and go around the base here just adding in a little bit of the uh, same sort of color that we added here. So just adding in, but a much more simple variation, just adding some in that goes all the way along the edges. Just trying to show a little bit more sort of surface area around there too. So trying to just add in a couple more streaks here and there just to add in a little bit more detail in the same way that we did there. But of course, because it's further back, we're not too interested. Now, there's an adjustment I wanna make over here on the left of the water. If we go to our layers and go down to the block of blue that's got the water area here, we'll tap on it and we'll alpha lock it so we can paint directly in it. We'll go to our colors and we'll grab this darker tone here at the middle of the third column from the right and with our brush, set to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. The size wants to be about 15-ish percent and we're just gonna sort of darken up around here just a little bit underneath our tree area here and just darken that up and leaving that lighter streak through there. And likewise, we can maybe just darken up underneath here as well. Just, you'll see that area here just become a little bit brighter. The only other adjustment I wanna make is just this blob of darkness here. I just wanna make an adjustment to it, just make it look a little bit more friendly and likewise a little bit more like leaves. So if we go to our layers and we go right up towards the top and we go right to the foreground group and we have the base layer for it. Let's go to your eraser, tap on the eraser, and we'll switch it into potentially even the snow gum under organic. With our brush size set to around about sort of 5%, we'll just go ahead and just, just erase into it a little bit and just, just take away some of the edge, making sure it looks a little bit more like leaves almost, like so, and just break up that harshness of it. A little something like that. Change up that edge a little bit for me, just to make sure it looks a bit more like a part of the tree. Another adjustment you could make, but this is totally optional, is if we go into our background hills group, we open that up, and where we've got a clipped layer here to our ground, we'll go ahead and create another new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it. And we'll go to our colors and we'll grab the middle color in the far right column. And with our brush set to the soft airbrush under airbrushing still, and then very, very lightly, we can just go in here and just overlap the top of this just a tiny bit. And I mean, very, very lightly. All I wanna do is kind of just fade it out a little bit in its color in comparison. So if you do something a little bit like mine, that's a little bit too bright, just tap on the layer and just lower the opacity down. And I think just something for me around about sort of 60% just pushes that a little bit further back in the scene. And it's almost like here, here, and here are our priorities. And then the final thing to do is if we go to our layers and go down to the sky here, the blue layer right at the back. We'll go ahead and go to our colors. We'll grab this color here in the top right of the palette. We'll go ahead and make our brush eyes around about sort of 30% and 
and towards the top right corner we're just going to introduce a bit of a brighter tone so just in a circular motion just make that sky a little bit more yellow towards the top right corner and if we go ahead and pinch with two fingers we go full screen with four we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And if you like tutorials like this with this kind of concept, I create loads of them over on my Patreon. I'll throw up a few of them on the screen now. If you wanna become a member over on my Patreon and get access to a catalog of over 60 tutorials at the time of recording, very nearly 70, get your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, and much, much more, hit the link in the description down below to come and join the family. And if you like this one here on YouTube, there's another one here that you may also like. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.